Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I'm going to attempt to explain how the bootstrap circuit works in the output stage of an audio amplifier circuit. If you ever worked on an amplifier you might have seen this before and if you've played around with integrated circuit audio amplifier chips you might have seen on the data sheet there's a pin that's marked bootstrap and the schematic shows that you connect a capacitor from the output to the bootstrap pin. The purpose of that is to allow for a greater output voltage swing which results in higher output power. This circuit here, which has nothing to do with my audio amplifier project videos, but this is just another circuit I'm tinkering with. You see from the output node there's a capacitor that's connected to a point between two resistors. One outside point on the resistors connects to the supply voltage and the other side connects to the base and the rest of the driving circuit of the output stage. Well, This circuit here is called the bootstrap circuit. Okay, So I've drawn a simplified circuit here showing the output stage and what's known as the voltage amplification stage or VAS. You notice there's no driver transistors in use here. Like I said, I want to keep it simple for the explanation. So we have your typical push-pull design emitter follower type output. And the Class A stage has a resistor up here. We'll just call this a current source for now. These two diodes are used for biasing the output stage. It keeps the stage slightly turned on so we can avoid crossover distortion. And this transistor down here is a driven element. It's operated in class A and provides additional voltage gain. This stage of the amplifier must provide enough current to the output stage so we get the maximum current we need to drive our load. Now let's look at this amplifier in a couple of scenarios. Let's say that it's turned on and there's no signal. So the output is going to be at zero. And if you remember, transistors have the base to emitter junction, and that voltage drop is going to be around 650 millivolts or so on both transistors. And with a little bias current flowing, it's going to be so small, it's going to create such a small additional voltage drop across the emitter resistors that we can ignore it for now. So the base voltages are going to be very close to the output voltage. It'll be in the upper transistor will be about plus 650 millivolts higher and this transistor will be minus 650 volts relative to our output node. So in the next scenario we'll say we're putting a signal on this transistor of course that's going to drive the output and we'll have a signal on the output. We'll say that we're driving it with enough signal that the output voltage at the peaks approach the positive and the negative rails. If you remember I said that the base voltages are going to be pretty close minus the, um, the base to emitter diode drops in the transistors. So you can think of the output transistors and the base circuit, the biasing circuit, they're all going to be on a potential, you can think of it all together sliding up and down with a sine wave on the output. So when the output is at its most negative voltage, it'll be very close to the minus 10 volts we have here. That means the transistor is turned on and that's what's pulling the output node towards this rail. So using conventional current flow, we have current coming from the supply common through the load, through the transistor, back out the negative rail and cycle around like this. Of course, some of the current's going to go into the base and through this transistor, which is driving it. Now when this output voltage is high towards the positive rail, something interesting happens. Well, if you remember, when this output voltage is near the supply rail, so is this base voltage. We're using this resistor to provide current to this circuit here. 
And what happens when you have a small voltage drop? You know, again, this base voltage is close to this supply voltage. There's little voltage across this resistor. Therefore, there's going to be little current. Now, of course, in the real world, the transistor cannot get all the way to the supply voltage. If it did, there would be zero current available and it couldn't get there anyway. So the point I'm trying to make, as this voltage approaches the positive supply, the voltage drop across this resistor gets smaller and smaller and the current gets less and less. We don't have enough current to drive this transistor anymore. So what ends up happening is you get a smaller voltage than you could have and the amplifier doesn't deliver as much power as it should. So what can we do about this? Well, we need to take out this resistor here and replace it with a constant current source. That could be an active current source like I used in my other videos. If you're following my amplifier build videos, you saw me using a constant current source in the input stage. And what's the attribute of a constant current source? Well, of course, it delivers a constant current. And it also has infinite input impedance, ideally. In the real world, it doesn't, but it has a pretty high input impedance. So it allows this voltage to slide around easily while keeping the current constant. Now, there's another way we can achieve this, and that's by using a bootstrap circuit. So let me redraw a bootstrap circuit here. Okay, so now I added a bootstrap circuit. Whatever resistor value I had before, I took that out and put two resistors in of half the value. So the total equals the same value I had before. And then I took a capacitor here, connected it in the middle, and the other side is connected to the output. Now let's see how this works. Well, if you remember, with the amplifier sitting at idle, or zero voltage on the output, the base is going to be at about zero volts as well. Again, I'm not considering the diode drop in the base to emitter junction. But anyhow, we'll say we have about 10 volts across this. So these resistors now act as a voltage divider and there'll be 5 volts at this point. So this capacitor charges up to 5 volts. So relative to the output node, we have 5 volts. So what happens now when the output is close to the supply voltage? Well, we'll just, to keep it simple, we'll just say that the output is at the supply voltage. Like I said, in the real world, that can happen. So now you have 10 volts here. And if you have 10 volts on the base, then you have nothing here. The current can't flow. However, we added this bootstrap circuit. So what happens is this capacitor is charged up to 5 volts. So if this is now 10 volts, well, we're going to have 10 volts on this side of, on this uh, plate of the capacitor. So relative to ground or the supply common, this is 15 volts now. Yes, it is actually higher than the supply voltage. And that's because of the additive effect of this output voltage plus the charge voltage on the capacitor. So with 10 volts here, 15 volts here, you have a difference of 5 volts. So with the output at the maximum positive voltage swing, we have 5 volts here that we can that will conduct through this resistor. That means we have plenty of current to drive this transistor with. Now let's say that the voltage was at half the supply voltage. It went to plus 5 volts here. So how does that work? We well, have 5 volts here, which means there's 5 volts on this side of the capacitor, plus the charge. So now you have 10 volts at this point, and the difference is 5 volts. You still have that 5 volts. So you can see how this is behaving as a constant current source because it's maintaining that same voltage differential to keep that current constant. Like I said, if you have the same voltage across resistor, you're going to have the same current going through that resistor. So how does this work when we have the negative voltage? Let's say the output is now at 
negative voltage. In other words, this is minus 10 volts here. So we have minus 10 volts and we have plus 5 volts. And that's pretty much how a bootstrap circuit works. Now in closing, there's a couple more things I want to say. Well, for one thing, the bootstrap circuit does not have to be in this positive part of the circuit. It could be down here, and the driven transistor could be up here, so they could be flip-flopped. Another thing you might run across is these resistor values may not be the same. Keep in mind that you do have the base to emitter drops, at higher currents you'll have significant voltage drop across this resistor as well so the designer might be trying to optimize this circuit another important thing to understand is that this works with AC only it you know it doesn't work with DC you don't really want to use it in a op amp type situation where you're controlling DC you can think of this as a high pass network you select this capacitor so it handles the lowest frequencies you're going to deal with because if you don't you'll lose the effect of the bootstrapping at lower frequencies so if your amplifier is going to handle down to 20 Hertz you want to make sure that the pass band of this circuit covers that and more now another thing you might hear is well doesn't having electrolytic capacitors in the circuit because you know this is going to be a fairly large value so you're going to end up using an electrolytic capacitor and you'll get the audio types that say don't electrolytic capacitors generate distortion in the signal yes they can however uh, that's not really true in all cases you only get distortion from the capacitor when you have a significant voltage drop across the plates of the capacitor so you have to remember that you are choosing the value of this capacitor to work or be a low impedance to the bands of frequencies that you're using this with. And another way of saying it is in the pass band, the voltage across the plates of the capacitor are going to be very low because the capacitor represents a very low impedance to those frequencies. In that case, you're not going to have distortion. So, you know, that's just an audio fool thing. You can use electrolytic capacitors just fine in audio circuits. Just remember that little tidbit of information. Now there's other things you run into, like at high frequencies, uh, the impedance of the capacitor can actually start going up. But again, you know, that's going to happen at much higher frequencies than audio. Well, that's about all I can think of on the bootstrap circuit. Hopefully my description made it easier to understand. And, well, that's it for this. Thanks for watching.